Hey everybody. Um, yeah, so today I wanted to go into a completely full in-depth tutorial tutorial about how to make IRs. And I've referenced this before in pretty much all my videos, which is like using uh, Reaffer in order to, you know, make a sort of Reaper exclusive IR, but I wanted to actually physically make an IR file. And it's a little bit complicated. So this video is going to be a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to go completely from start to finish. There's no, there, you don't need to watch any other videos. You just, this should sort of tell you how to take any guitar from any source and make roughly the cabinet that they used with an IR. Now, you know, obviously this is using free software. Um, take this with a grain of salt. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect in the slightest. But with that being said, um, everything that goes on this video shouldn't be that hard and just, you know, ask questions in the comments. Of course, even if this video is like five years old, I will still try and like respond to comments. Um, regardless, let's sort of get started. So the first thing you're going to need a couple of things, actually, the main program that we're going to be using is called, uh, Voxingo Deconvolver. Um, we'll go more over, we'll go over this more, uh, later on when we actually have to use it. But as of right now, it's just important to have in your back burner. Um, you will also need a sample clip. So that's going to be, um, the file that you're going to be sort of trying to make an IR out of. Um, for this, I have this, uh, guitar track. You might recognize it. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. Um, if this gets copyright struck, I don't care. <laughs> um, so once we have that set up, now I did run a little bit of EQ and um, you know uh, multiband compression just to make it sound a little bit better to my ears at least. Um, I will link. Hopefully, I can still link the sort of Guitar Hero Metallica um, multi tracks so you can sample those. Um, so let's get into the actual process here. Um, we're going to open up the FX chain and we're going to, I'm going to actually have these favorites here. This is, uh, this is the star reaffer. Um, if you watched my earlier video, you probably already know how this is going to work. We're going to, uh, set the mode to subtract the points to precise, the FFT size to 1024. Um, and so what this is doing is reaffer is built to cancel out background noise and so what this mode would do is say if i had a recording of me talking and i had a fan in the background i could find just that fan sort of making the noise that it is with nothing else and it will say these are the frequencies you know that uh that the fan is making so just cancel these out what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing that to a guitar track but instead of subtracting it we're going to sort of make it an EQ. And it's really hard to explain, but hopefully when you see it, you'll understand. So you're going to want to highlight your uh, guitar track. Make sure you have the repeat on. And then you're going to want to tick automatically build noise profile and then just click on play. And you'll hear some really weird artifacts. That's normal. Um, what it's doing right now is it's saying, OK, so these are the frequencies that are being played. So anything below this line that we're drawing, um, mute it entirely. Um, so these weird little clicks and pops are just new frequencies that haven't been played before kind of shooting through. But what we're going to do with this line is we're going to take it and instead of using it as a sort of gate, we're going to use it as an EQ graph. Um, the reason why we have edit mode on precise and yeah, you just want to let it loop once or twice. The reason why we have edit, edit mode on precise is it actually has these really fine points. If you just did points smooth or just points in general, it wouldn't be nearly as precise and it would sound terrible. Uh, FFT size, the higher this is, the sort of higher quality, quote unquote, but the also also the higher latency. 1024 seems to be that perfect amount where there's not a lot of latency, but it's still precise enough where it sounds good. Um, so once this is looped once or twice, the longer it is, you want to have it, you want to have it loop at least twice so we can stop it now. Uh, the minute you stop, it, you want to tick this box again. Otherwise, it might erase everything. Um, so what we're going to do after this, you want to change the mode to EQ. Um, and now what we're going to try and do is sort of match volumes. Um, the way we're going to do that is we're going to untick this box here so the FX is disabled and we're going to listen to it. And then we're going to tick it and you'll notice it's a lot quieter. And so what we're going to do is if we hold down control, as it says right here in the corner, we can actually make it louder by dragging up. 
and so we want the volumes to match so that you know one is not louder than the other so without then with. now oh that's a bit too much now you'll notice that it's different frequencies that are lighting up so it's hard to tell volume wise but roughly i'd argue that this is pretty much the same Perfect. So now that we have that, we are going to save this as our preset. I'm going to call this disposable, oh, if you can spell, uh, tutorial. Perfect. Okay, so that's step one done. And now if you put this track, this preset, on a sort of distorted track already as a preamp, it would sort of match it a little bit. And that's why it's sort of Reaper exclusive because it's not an IR file, it's a it's a reaffer file. Um, but that's not recognized by everything. So say you wanted to make this an IR, which is uh, really, really useful because you, know, you actually get to sh uh, share it, essentially. Um, that's where Voxingo Deconvolver comes into play. So the first thing we're going to do once you open up the program, obviously, goes without saying there's a link in the description we're going to want to uh, click this button at the bottom that says test tone gen um, these are sort of my settings I, I don't know if they're the defaults honestly I haven't really been able to tell a difference but you want to make sure that these three are the same duration is just duration it doesn't really matter too much and we're going to click on generate so this is sort of the folder that we're going to be working in um, and it's going to save a file here um, once you've done once you've done that you can X out of this, open up this file, and you can see uh, this is the sweep, as it's called. So we're going to drag and drop that into Reaper. And uh, we're going to close out of that for just one second. And oh, we're going to sort of, this is, this is just an order, another audio clip. You can ignore it for right now. So this is actually, if we zoom in, you can see this is actually a sweep of all of the frequencies. Um, if you look up here, you can see uh, it's a little, uh, you know, it's a little loud. Um, I'm going to lower the volume a good amount. And you can hear it. I'm going to lower it even more. It will slowly sweep up. I'm going to stop it right about here because then it gets into the really high-pitched frequencies that nobody likes to listen to. And this is how IRs are made, by the way. It, it, you take this sweep and you would play it through a cabinet and then uh, some magic happens and then you have an IR. I, I honestly don't really know the process that much behind the scenes. There's a lot of really cool science behind it. Um, so we're going to be taking this and we're going to actually be applying the uh, FIR that we had just made. So now it's going to boost certain frequencies and cut certain ones. You can kind of hear it's a little bit different and the volume is a lot less stable and that's because it's going to raise and lower depending on the um what's the word the actual like file that we're using. So this is where things get a little bit complicated and um, I'm going to need to cut recording and then come back to recording just because I need to actually export this. So what you're going to do, uh, we're going to delete those and then we're going to uh, take this and then we're going to click on file, uh, render, and then uh, file name, I'm just going to do this as tone capture, and then we're going to render to browse, we're going to put it into that folder that we've made. Um, we're going to render, uh, we've just rendered that file. <laughs> yeah, this is a bit complicated. For those of you curious, I have my mic set up, it streams from here into OBS, so if this gets closed, then we're kind of screwed. So I'm going to uh, reopen. Yes, this, because this is going to be important a little bit later. Um, now, if we open up this folder, we can see that we have a good amount of um, files here. We can actually get rid of that. So this is the sweep, uh, and this is the tone capture. 
We're going to open up Voxengo deconvolver once more. And you can see we have the test tone file and then the file folder. For this one, we're going to uh, open up our the uh, original sweep. And then uh, in this one, we are going to open up the one that we just generated. Okay, cool. So hopefully uh, I did that in the right order. It might be the other way around. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't done this actually in a while, so uh, well, let's pray for the best, and we're going to click on Process. And once it has that, you'll see we actually have created a brand new, um, a brand new file called Tone Captured Underscore DC. Now we're going to rename this to what was it? Disposable uh, Tutorial. Yeah, that checks out. Perfect. And so that's when uh, this file comes into play, and we're going to go back to that in a second. Um, so I have recorded this little piece of me playing. Pretty straightforward stuff, and we're going to just edit it to have a sort of preamp setting. So uh, let's use, let's use, uh, what do I want to use? Let's use a bias effects too. Uh, I'm going to sort of speed through creating a preset. Um, remember for this part, you, I mean, we're going to be, we have our, our file. Um, it's just in that folder that we just made. We just actually need to use it. So I'm going to speed through uh, making this sound better. I'm gonna just highlight everything and then get to it. I might as well walk, uh, talk through my process here. What I usually like to do with bias effects too, if you use it, um, I'm gonna lower this volume just a bit. I take a gr uh, drive, I crank the drive all the way down, tone all the way up, and then the level to around of 4.6. I almost always use dual, just so you can have bigger combination there. And I use bias amp. Um, let's go with the thermal 771. It's not gonna sound the best, and that's just an unfortunate truth. And if I could, I would totally, you know, uh, go through this whole process in depth. But uh, I want to save everyone's time. So hopefully it didn't just crash. Come on, there we go. Um, All right, you know, it's not the most pretty sound in the world, but we're just going to have to roll with it. Um, now we're going to disable the cabinets. So you have this terrible hissy, terrible noise. And then we're going to open up, I'm gonna use NatIR. Um, link in the description, of course. And we're going to locate that file that we just made. All right, so this is a very important part because if I, uh, if I did it wrong, it's going to crash everything. Um, and I'm gonna have to start this tutorial over again. So let's pray to God that I got this right and Perfect it worked and You'll notice if I crank up I got to crank up the volume of course And you'll hear it worked, you know, we now have created a Pretty good IR obviously it doesn't sound exactly the same as the record just because you know, it's not a perfect thing um, But you know you could uh you know, do anything that you want with this. And it's a really useful method. I could send this to anyone and they would be able to download the IR and then use it themselves. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the process of this whole, well, process. <laughs> uh, yeah, so links in the description to everything that you're going to need. Um, everything is, I'm gonna stop this. Uh, links in the description to everything that you're going to need. It's all free. Um, obviously, if you're going to be using Bias FX2, it's going to cost like $150, but uh, any preamp will work. I will even demonstrate uh, TSC times 30. Once again, that's another link I'm going to have to put in the description. It's going to sound a little bit worse, but... It's a really great system. I'm. I hope this helps someone. If they 
want to create an IR pack for themselves or sell it or give it to their friends or anyone, uh, you know, the, that's great. Um, sweet. So leave any questions, comments, whatever. Um, I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. See ya.